worthier or accumulate more wealth or comforts, whatever that is your desire, you're looking for the love of your life, or there's a, there's a woman who wants to have a child, and that's their really desire, that's their, their mission to have children, family, none of these things is bad. But we are exactly where, where we're supposed to be, wherever you're at. So the more you start to understand the nature of the absolute, of how this thing works, which is not a mental exercise, but if in, initially it could be an intellectual understanding, but then it translates into a deeper understanding of really living it and being it. And the more you understand that, the more you become comfortable with yourself and your destiny of where, where you're at. And your attention from com comparing yourself continuously to other people, it, it shifts. You don't really do that. You are aware of what is going on. You're not ignorant to it, but you're not comparing yourself. That competition of comparison disappears because you're exactly where you need to be. And understanding that whatever you need, whatever life chooses, life will give it to you. You will receive what you need to receive. So there is a sense of trust. There is a sense of acceptance that starts to take over. Your accept acceptance of what is. And what is, is this. Wherever you're at right now. This is exactly what you deserve. This is exactly what you're meant to have. This is exactly how you're meant to look like. This is your shape. This is your status right now. This is your finances. And God existence is giving you exactly that. It can be any more, it can be any less. Now that doesn't mean that it won't change. Of course it changes. It, everything is going to change. As we can see it. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to try to improve things. What it means is you have developed your awareness to a point of accepting yourself without judging yourself, without beating yourself up, that you are exactly where you're meant to be in this moment. Now, through meditation, through work, through understanding, contemplation, you begin to kind of settle into this. And as you're accepting where you're at is exactly where you're supposed to be, then in the meantime, a sense of trust comes because you're beginning to recognize that God is all there is. Consciousness is all there is. Everything is made out of consciousness. The rich, the poor, the fortunate, the unfortunate, they're all manifestations of the creator. None of these elements, people have their own free will. There's no such a thing as free will. So. I willed it to get to this point. That doesn't exist. It's an illusion. It's pure illusory. It's the consciousness that, consciousness that wills it through you. It's the consciousness that makes you choose and sometimes you lose and you fail and the same intelligence makes you win and become successful. You don't choose that. You don't have the ability to do it. 
It's pure illusion. Purely illusion. Something much bigger than you and I, something far, far beyond our understanding that is capable of turning day to night, capable of creating seasons, turns summer to fall and fall to winter and to spring, something way, way more powerful, mightier and more intelligent that's been here is running the show. You're not running the show. I'm not running the show. We've just been here. We're eggs. We're little eggs. We're nothing, really, time-wise. How long have you been here? 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 80 years? 80 years in comparison to eternity? That's like blinking an eye. You blink your eye. So your life is this. You blinked and that's it. You were born and then you die. It's very fast. It just happens like that. You can't understand the eternity through few years that you've been here. It's too short. To get a better glimpse of the eternity, you need to be here a lot longer. You got to live here. You have to be here for maybe a, a thousand years to get a glimpse of it, to understand it to a point. Still not enough to understand eternity. So what you want to do as a practice is a number of different things. A is what many, many different times I've talked in the past, and we've had it in our different workshops, that you're simply observing the emotion. So something happens, jealousy comes, and instead of identifying with it, you simply, if you're conscious, what you do is you acknowledge its presence and you tell yourself, you don't need to tell anybody else, but you tell yourself that jealousy is here. You don't say I'm jealous or you don't try to push it away because it's a very uncomfortable sensation. It's a very uncomfortable feeling when you feel jealous. You, nobody wants to feel jealous. But if you're conscious and you're working on yourself and you come across this information, what you do is you're simply acknowledging it and you tell yourself, jealousy is present. Jealousy is visiting me. And allow yourself to feel it. Feel it. Be jealous. Because now you're not in a denial. You're admitting something to yourself that you're experiencing an uncomfortable sensation of jealousy. And you're watching it as a guest. You have a guest visiting you. And how long does a guest stay in your house? Two days, a week, two weeks, and then they have to go. That's what guests are. So they come and visit you and they go. So you're treating this sensation of jealousy like it's a guest. It's here. You're going to feel it. You're not resisting it because if you resist it, it persists. It gets stronger. So you're simply experiencing these uncomfortable sensations of being jealous. And then it just goes away. And it's gone. 